songs nearly every bluegrass banjo player learns is Cripple Creek. That probably has something to do with the fact that it is the first complete song that Earl Scruggs teaches in his instruction method, both the original version and the revised version. Although Cripple Creek does have lyrics, it was recorded instrumentally by Flatt and Scruggs and appears on this very influential album, Foggy Mountain Banjo. While you might be tempted to think of Cripple Creek as a beginner's song, this gentleman right here, Sonny Smith, won the National Banjo Championship by performing Cripple Creek in the preliminary rounds. Of course me, the best I ever did was come in second in the Texas State Banjo Championships. And uh, I have this clock here to prove it. And I don't know what the message was. Maybe they thought I needed help with my timing. After a while of playing the same song, some people tend to get bored, so they're looking for variations. Variations will be notes that sound good against the background chords. So here are the chords to Cripple Creek. Realize that part A has that C chord, part B does not. As a point of clarity, Earl Scruggs' solo actually begins on beat four. One, two, three, four, one, two, three. That slide takes a full beat. It begins on beat four, finishes on beat one. I think of that as what I call the Looney Tune slide. If you think of how those cartoons start, da 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 da. So all the variations will go over will begin on beat four as you start part A. When you play part B, part B begins right on beat one. If you're following along on the tab that is provided on the screen from time to time, you'll want to understand the concept of first and second endings. So we play through here through the first ending, go back to the repeat. As you come to this measure, you jump over and pick up the second ending. A real quick note on left hand fingerings before we play all the variations. Variations two and four both begin up here at the ninth fret and the tenth fret with your second finger. On variation four, you also will get your pinky over here on fret 12. The part B variation on variation two is played out of the E minor shape that you use in Cumberland Gap. You get a little bit of a choke by pushing your pinky there. Let's now play the complete song with all the variations. We'll begin with Earl's break and follow it up with five variations. If you need it slowed down, just use the YouTube playback feature. 